Okay. So we are here today to talk about a rollout of our literacy block for grades K through six um, for our school year um, here. And what I want to remind everyone is that this is brand new to some people. We're gonna take some time to play with this model, help you build it into your schedule. And we do have supports in place um, as we move through the year um, to help with that. Okay. So our goal today um, in our hour or so together is that teachers will be able to understand the importance of an aligned K-6 literacy block and will understand the expectations for the 2022-23 uh, school year. Um, so I know that some teachers are already implementing similar blocks, but we're now working to align our blocks and in instruction SU wide. Um, eventually our goal would be to have a fully aligned curriculum but we're taking the first steps this year um, towards that long range goal. So we have schools using a variety of programs. And at this point, programs will still remain a tool for instruction within your school, but will be implemented within the literacy block model. Um, therefore, teachers will need to identify the pieces that fit the model and adjust accordingly. Um, and I know, for instance, um, West Rutland uses my views. So we spent some time last year digging through that and found the pieces that would fit um, a workshop model. I'm happy to sit down and do that with any other schools that um, would like to do that as well. Um, so why are we doing this? Um, what's the purpose? So the National Reading Panel identifies five concepts or pillars that should be incorporated daily into our curriculum. And those five pillars are phonemic awareness, phonics, fluency, vocabulary, and comprehension. We want to work to increase student engagement and ownership we want to increase student to student discourse and which is discussion among our um, students and increase time for teachers to work with small groups and individual students for things such as progress monitoring, universal interventions, and dedicated time for interventions to occur outside the classroom without impeding core instruction. So if there are targeted or intensive layers of intervention that are happening, they can be outside of the core instruction. We've also built this based on information that came from the PLL um, audit that we did last year. Um, for example, we know that we need to increase our independent reading time, we need to increase our writing time and improve student engagement, and ownership, things like that. So that's another reason uh, behind the work that we're doing this year. Okay. So we're looking to improve our instructional practices and remain up to date with the current research. This is research that suggests we need to adapt our work around guided reading groups. So that's one major shift that we're going to start to make this year. Um, so here's some research about that. Guided reading groups have been shown to exacerbate achievement gaps. And when we say guided reading, we mean like leveled reading based on the Fontas and Pinnell assessment. Um, slow reading growth for some. Um, none of the students initially placed in the lowest kindergarten group ever caught up to the reading level of their classmates who had started out in the highest reading group. So we're creating these discrepancies right off the bat in kindergarten. Um, so we need to adjust our instruction for that. So we're moving from those groups to strategy or skill groups. So you might have students of differing ability levels working on um, similar skills. Um, so you might have two students working on character traits, but they could be reading two very different level books. Okay, so skill and strategy groups versus leveled groups. Okay, um, students who participated in the targeted reading groups over three years performed significantly higher than students in a control group that use standard reading classes. Okay, so that's why we're really starting to make this shift. Okay, the other shift we're that's built into this is moving from a balanced literacy approach to a structured literacy approach or science of reading. And so the research says after four years, test scores have risen dramatically for all populations who participated in structured language or science of reading. Students respond quickly to a systematic phonics instruction. One school doubled the number of kindergartners scoring above average on the phonics screener. Okay. 
we also have to acknowledge it's going to take time to see that up in the older grades. Okay, we're starting with that phonics instruction in kindergarten, pre-K, K, K one and two. It's going to take time to see that as we move through. Okay. So readers workshop. Just a quick overview. There's three main components. There's the mini lesson. There's independent work, small groups, and conferencing time. And then there's a closure. Okay. So again, that's not dramatically different from what many of you are already doing, but we're making those minor tweaks and creating common blocks SU wide. And again, that biggest change will be the independent work portion of the block. So expectations were sent out to you in, on June 9th. So these um, should be familiar to you. So these are the K to two expectations. If you work in these grade ranges, you know that you should have a 30 minute block dedicated to Hegarty and foundations. You should have a 60 minute block for your reader's workshop. And then, and that includes your mini lesson, independent reading and five minutes of closure. And we're gonna talk about each of those sections in just a minute. It looks a little bit different in grades three to six because you don't have the Hegarty and phonics piece. Okay, so you have um, your reader's workshop and your closure there. Okay. And again, those were sent out back on, in June. So when we think about the mini lesson, what does that look like? That should be short, 10 to 15 minutes. It should be explicit. It should introduce a new skill, okay, a targeted new skill. And it should be interactive. You should be practicing the new skill. The easiest way to do that is to pick some really good read-alouds. You read to the to the class practicing that skill. Those students are having in-depth discussions about higher level texts. Okay, so a lot of people think in, with science of reading that kids aren't getting, they're reading decodable text, not getting that higher level comprehension, but they really are getting that if we incorporate these um, read-alouds. Okay, so it should be an interactive piece here. Then for independent reading, or independent work time, excuse me, it should be choice reading okay so we're not going to say a student has to read this book it has to be choice it has to give them something that they're interested in reading that's the best way to get them excited right we have to build their stamina in the first six weeks you can't just walk in on the first day of school and say you have to read 30 minutes independently right that's not going to um, bode well for the kids so building that stamina over the first six weeks so that's one activity they should be doing they also should be writing about reading. So if my lesson today was on character traits, and that was my mini lesson with explicit instruction and practice, they then should pick up their independent reading book and think about character traits. Then they should be writing about that, whether it's a sticky note that says this character is blank because of blank, depending on your um, grade level. Okay, So they should be practicing those skills that you just taught them. Okay. The other piece is Lexia. Okay. All kids have access to Lexia. It should be used a minimum of 60 minutes weekly. So that if you break that down, that's a, maybe 15 minutes a day, even less some days. Okay. One of the expectations, however, is not that we just stick kids onto Lexia because it's something that they can do independently. We need to be reviewing their data and usage weekly, okay? There's lots of great resources in there. It's gonna pop up and tell you when a kid is struggling and what they're struggling with. So we need to be utilizing those tools in Lexia. They also have certificates if a student achieves a level. And different schools have done different things. I've seen schools create um, big bulletin boards about different grade levels achieving a certain number of certificates. Um, I know when I was in the classroom, we made a big deal each time somebody um, earned a certificate, they were acknowledged in front of the whole class. So however you wanna do that, but acknowledge their success, okay? So that's the independent work um, side of things. The other side, when kids are doing that independent work, teachers should be working with groups and conferencing, okay? So again, skills groups. For K to two, it might be extra foundations practice. It could be a reteach of the lesson. It could be extra practice. It could be an extension 
or it could be a pre-teach for something to come if you know a student needs that, okay? It would be a great time to use decodable texts with students. Um, and then another thing could be comprehension strategies in their independent reading books. So again, many of us are really accustomed to bringing a small group of kids back to our table and we're all reading the same book. Those days are kind of passing by and now what you might do is bring back students who are all working on main idea but they have their own independent reading book. Okay, so your, your groups are going to look different this year. That's new to a lot of people, that's okay. Again, we have people here to support and help with that transition. So please don't be afraid to reach out for that, okay? We are moving away from level text, particularly in those younger grades and more into decodable text so that they're practicing those foundation skills that we're teaching them, the phonics um, skills that they're learning, okay? The closer, closure section should be five to 10 minutes. Okay, and they should be sharing out from their independent work time. So if I taught a lesson on character traits, they went and practiced the character traits in their independent time. And now they're going to share with a partner maybe what character traits they identified. Okay, so they're sharing out about the application piece. Okay, This again allows for more student-to-student -student discourse or discussion, Okay, talking about what we're teaching them. Okay, maybe they're also sh sharing something else interesting about their story. It doesn't necessarily just have to be about that lesson. They can extend that. Okay, so those are the three main pieces of your reader's workshop. Does anyone have any questions before I move on to writer's workshop? Lindsay, this is probably a kind of a stupid question, but like if the mini lesson was character traits, then you you would say to the child that day you that you can't be choosing informational texts. They don't really get to, right? I mean, on that one, you'd, you'd call it. Sure, so that's a great question, Karen. So what I have done in the past is I try not to mandate what kids are reading, but if it's something like that, you have to start and do your little sticky note assignment in a non um, in a fiction text. Once you've done that, they can move on to an informational text if that's what they're really interested in. Thank you, Karen, for that. Kayla, go ahead. Um, I'm trying to figure out how my view fits into this because you said they shouldn't all be reading the same story, but that's what they do in my view. Um, and the lessons aren't really short in my view, like five to 10 minutes. So is it more important that we teach different reading skills from read alouds that we choose and then they work on it in their own book or that we're doing the following the my view stories and the skills in there? So Kayla, way back at the end of June, so right as school was ending, I think Jay shared with you some ideas of what parts of the my view lesson to include and which ones we may be able to skip over. Um, so I would take a look at that. Maybe Jay can share that out again or I can find it and share it with you. Thanks, Jay. Okay. Um, and then we can sit down and talk about that. Um, yes, you can use stories from my view as a read aloud too. Um, but the kids have to have some choice. So during independent reading time, um, they have to have choice. We have to think about all of our kids can't access the same text. So that we're thinking about UDL. Um, if our purpose is for kids to be reading, we can't give them all the same, the same text. So we'll have to adjust that a little bit, Kayla. Okay. But I'm happy to sit down and talk to you about what we came up with for my view. Okay. Um, specifically. Lindsay, I have another question. Sure. Um, do you, because I switched from sixth grade to third grade, and mm -hmm. when I brought a lot of my stuff down here, I, you know, I realized I had all these books for mini lessons, you know, for just that many lessons. Do you foresee teachers at my level using short stories for mini, for mini lessons? Like, you know, there's a quick book about like butter on pancakes for teaching similes and like using that, but then also at a different time in the day, doing like a chapter book read aloud to continue like plot development and such. Is that okay to be doing too? Absolutely, absolutely. I would, um, when I was in the classroom, I did 
short picture books often yep. for my mini lessons yep. and they can often cross over from your reader's workshop to your writer's workshop which we can talk about and then i would do a separate interactive read aloud with a with a chapter book thanks karen barb go ahead hey um so i i just want to and i think i already know the answer <laughs> to my question um but will additional training be offered to because your presentation is is great, but I'm not really sure what that looks like. <laughs> Absolutely. I'd like a little so, more guidance. Yep. And I'll talk a little bit later, but I can bring it up now. I am available at any point to come in and chat with anybody about that with teams. Um, we also have coaches um, in your buildings that can help you with that. Um, and I will certainly, I can build modules and things like that around this to help. But we have people in place. Principals can also if they'd like schedule some professional learning time, if that's a need for their staff on Wednesday afternoons, and I can come in and dig deeper into these um, pieces for people, with people, I should say. Um, something else, um, I'm assuming we're not recreating a wheel, like there's gotta be videos or something out there that maybe if you could share, if you come across resources like that, um, mm -hmm. to share those where we could see in our own time as well, sure. that, that might be helpful. I, I really like to kind of see things in action. Absolutely. Thank you. And I can also help people connect with other classrooms um, that are using this type of model and people can go observe if that's something that's feasible um, that can be worked out with your principal. Barb, do you guys have the, like the cafe lessons and the daily five up in your grades? Is that something we use that we have? I don't know if Lindsay- Is that related to my view or no? No, it's like um, comprehension strategies, accuracy mm -hmm. strategies, fluency. We have like, um, we have a whole book about it. The, I think the primary teachers did a book study one year, um, but it has like different skills you can teach and it explains how to teach that skill. And okay, it's something yeah, you could look at, I guess, or if Lindsay agrees that we can use that. I don't know. Yeah, and Lisa just linked it, I think, for you. Okay, thank you. Lindsay, um, yes. another question I had, you know, I have some decodables that I started using last year, but, mm -hmm. you know, finding a lot of good decodable text is really difficult. Um, you know, like, I feel like I'd have enough to get me through like maybe a month with kids, but it's kind of like I'm going back to those leveled readers because I'm out of options. Sure, so I am working on finding a good match for the foundations program for decodable readers um but there are two sets to my knowledge that are continuing to be free digitally which is not ideal but it's a resource um okay. flyleaf publishing is continuing their free use of um, their decodables on their website um the other is called half pint readers okay and they, you can also, you can purchase them. I have some samples here, but they also have free ones on their website. Thanks, Lisa. Lindsay, Lisa just put another example in the chat too. Oh, thank you. Another resource, pardon me. Perfect. Great, thank you. It has been really difficult to find, um, as Lisa said, um, decodables with a scope and sequence similar to foundations. Um, so that continues to be a, a project on my list. Um, okay. So moving on to Lindsay, writers. Yes. So before you continue on, Lorraine had a question in the chat. Oh, I'm sorry. She asked, um, can or should people use the independent time to do their fast bridge assessments? Like their screeners, is that what you're referring to, Lorraine? Yeah. Okay. Um, early on in the year, I think it's fine to use that time. Um, I think I did <laughs> as a classroom teacher. Um, you know, you're building their stamina to work independently. So you can model to them what it would look like to start pulling kids in, to the back. So I think you can set it up as building your routines and doing that at the same time. It's not ideal all the time, but hope, like the K-1, they're short. They're five minutes per kid. Um, 
three times a year. So I think it should be okay. Thanks, Lorraine. So writer's workshop, um, it mirrors reading workshop. It's got a mini lesson, it's got independent time, and it's got a closure, okay? K2, it's expected you have 30 minutes in your schedule, okay? A mini lesson for about 10 minutes, independent writing for about 15, and closure for about five. Three to six, it's 45 minutes. So again, a short mini lesson for 10 minutes, an extended period for independent writing, and then closure for five to 10 minutes. Okay, so that's the basic structure there. Um, your mini lesson, again, is short, 10 to 15 minutes. It's explicit, so you're introducing a new skill. It's interactive, you're practicing the skill together. And you can utilize read alouds for examples of writing styles. A lot of people that I talk to, we get hung up when we use read alouds in Writer's Workshop because we think we have to read the entire book in Writer's Workshop and then it takes, you know, a good portion of your time. If you can align the use of a read aloud in Reader's Workshop and Writer's read Workshop, you can read the whole thing in Reader's Workshop and then just identify the pieces that are useful in Writer's Workshop. Okay, so you don't have to um, do extra reading. Mike, go ahead. Yeah, so Lindsay, uh, we've had this model for a couple of years now, of course. So I was told uh, that we do read aloud separately, but don't use that as a mini lesson. Are you saying we can now do the read aloud and the read aloud we do can also be used not just for pleasure of listening, but also for a mini lesson, are you saying? So I'm thinking of your mini lesson in Reader's Workshop, you would have a, um, a read aloud that would target your skill and you could pull from that same read aloud in your writer's workshop. So if I'm reading, um, of course, I'm not gonna be able to think of a book right now. Uh, the Recess Queen, okay, <laughs> so I'm silly. Um, in reader's workshop to talk about character traits, I can then pull that and talk about descriptive language in my writing mini lesson. So if yeah, I can- so, Yeah, I understand what you said, but do you understand what I'm saying? It's like, we've always been told, Ellen told us, you could do a read aloud just for the sake of doing a read aloud to get into your reading block and then don't use that book as a mini lesson skill for your reading block. Is that still I true? Is that still true? Yes. Yeah, so if you're doing a read aloud for fun, work. Well, I'm asking you, can we, do it, can we do it for both? Can I take a book that's a read aloud book and then every once in a while use something from that read aloud as a mini lesson within my reading block? Is that appropriate or no? Does that make sense? <laughs> I think so. I think I understand what you're saying, Mike. So I would definitely use it in my writer's workshop. Um, hey, Lindsay, I, mean, I think I know yeah. it. I think because we, you know, do okay. read alouds like chapter book read alouds. Yep. And I, are you, when you talk about read alouds, you're more talking about maybe a short story or a picture book or something like that that we can pull skills from typically? Yep. I'm not going to make a blanket statement and say you can't use a chapter book for those types of things either. Either So if you're doing, it's not a black and white answer. <laughs> yeah, so I do use chapter books for a mini lesson. It'll be a read aloud chapter book for a mini lesson, you know, one of those really picture books even, you know, lower level. Yeah. And then that'll be, that'll be our main lesson. But I do choose a book that I read throughout the whole, like the first month or two of school, I have choose one book as a read aloud. And I use that just as a pleasure read aloud for kids to get actively engaged of listening and you know, to a, a, a writing piece or a reading piece. So I think that's what you're saying is I should choose a, you know, a really short picture book as a read aloud, which I do do. Perfect. Then I think you're doing exactly what we're talking about, Mike. I think you're on the right track. Okay. Um, so that's your mini lesson. So independent writing. The key here is that your independent time should be a minimum of 50% of the block. So if you have a 30 minute writer's block, 15 minutes of that needs to be independent writing time at minimum, okay? So kids should be doing the work. So during independent writing, um, just like reading, you need to build stamina over the first six weeks of school. We can't expect that kindergartners can write for 15 minutes straight you know, in the first few weeks, build up a couple minutes at a time. 
um, and practice the skill from the daily lesson and incorporate that into previously learned skills. So if I'm writing, a, if my mini lesson today is about um, topic sentences, my students should go practice writing topic sentences. Okay, then they continue anything else that they want to practice. You know, they continue a writing piece, but they're really beefing up those topic sentences. Okay, while those students are working on independent writing, the teacher is running skills groups or one-on-one -on -one conferencing for writing pieces. Okay, so your skills group might be, I have a group of kids who's really um, struggling to punctuate dialogue correctly. So I'm gonna bring them together and we're gonna do that, okay? So again, it mirrors what we do in writer, in reader's workshop, okay? Then your closer, closure should be five to 10 minutes and you're sharing the work from the day. So again, if I was teaching about topic sentences, that's what students should be sharing out about that day so that we can see, can we, we can evaluate, did the students understand what we were teaching that day and what do I need to do for tomorrow's lesson? What questions do you have about writer's workshop? Let's see. Amanda, great question. So I had shared with Amanda some mentor sentences um, to work on the grammar side of things. And that would be a great place. Um, you could use that, Amanda, maybe as a warm up in your writing that day or use that as your mini lesson if you're doing something grammar related. Yep. Erin, go ahead. So, you know, I'm, I'm thinking about my writing block. Is it okay in the beginning of the year to can start doing like you read a short st short book with them, you talk about the topic and we use that book for inspiration and then move them throughout the rest of the, the year into more independent writing on their own? Is that what you're kind of thinking and looking towards? And then doing the genres. Yes. Yep. So you're going to start small, um, particularly with those younger kids that you teach, Erin. Um, and it might you might start the year just with free writes. Just get them interested in writing. They can write about anything they want. Um, and then you move into the genre writing. Yep. What other questions? Marsha, go ahead. So uh, if I'm understanding, you wanted 45 minutes for reading and 45 minutes for writing, if that's correct, I think, for the time. I have 45 minutes a day, period. That's it. So I would like to know, um, like, I guess this is a requirement. I'm a sixth grade teacher. Um, how does this fit? How How is that going to fit into it? Um, you know, two days before school starts that I'm kind of really seeing this and having to switch everything around. So Marsha, I think you're kind of an exception with the rest of the group. Your your block is set up a little bit differently. Um, so maybe you and I can sit down and look at how we might make this work. Um, I'd be happy to do that if that would work for you, Marsha. And again, it's this is something that we're all going to work together on. I don't expect, expect it to all be implemented on day one of school. Okay, we're going to work together over the course of the year. Um, but Marsha, I'd be happy to do that if you would like to schedule some time with me. Okay, thank you. Yes, Aaron, we can work on that. So Aaron asked to find some grade level um, samples. Yep. Aaron, can you share that document with me by any chance? 
if I can find it, it's probably right. from 2004, 2005. It's really <laughs> old. Like I'm thinking back to, cause we used to meet as teacher groups during in-service. We'd have, yep. you know, grade one would meet and we'd all score the same writing sample. So we could see how each, you know, level was doing. Um, mm -hmm. I could, I, I have a feeling it's probably in the trash, but I can look. If you find it, I'd love to see it. <laughs> Okay, so supports that are in place for you this year. I am here to talk, to help. Um, I can, you can reach me via email or Gchat. We have coaches that are more than happy to come in and help. Um, and again, principals can also invite me to come in and we can do some professional learning around any of these things that might be school specific or grade level specific. Um, I'm happy to do that and I can schedule that um, with your administrators if you just let them know you feel you need that. All right, so we just wanted everyone to have an overview of that. Please be kind to yourself as we kind of start down this path of changing things. Okay, I will be around in, in buildings just seeing how things are going. Um, please don't get nervous when I step into your classroom. It's just so that I can see how things are going, what, we need to put in what we need to do for supporting teachers. Okay, so I'm just there to to help and support. Lisa, do you have anything you want to add? No, thanks for saying that, Lindsay. I think um, being kind to yourself is really important, right? So these things don't happen overnight. Lots of people have questions or unique schedules or unique situations. Like we can work through all of those, um, you know, and continue to provide professional development on any of these components that are gonna be helpful and useful to folks. So um, same thing, we've we've set up Lindsay with um, our principals to do uh, group walkthroughs every once in a while, um, every couple of months, um, focused on literacy as well. And like, again, don't get nervous when people walk in, we're really, we're trying to see what's going on so that we can provide supports, resources, training, professional development to help everybody move forward um, and that we can calibrate as an administrative team around what it is exactly that we're looking for and be able to articulate that well um, for each other and for all of you. Um, so yeah, it's going to be a, a learning learning process all together. Um, and you know, don't don't forget your grade level and content area folks because you have some tremendous resources there and across our schools there there are people who've been playing around with reading workshop or writing workshop for a long time as just part of their normal practice and have you know learned kind of the hard way i guess about you know what what works well and what doesn't at different grade levels so you know just a reminder to don't hesitate to reach out to those grade level colleagues and see if anybody's been using this and what they've done to be particularly successful and we did talk about the daily five we dropped that link in there um, my favorite part of the daily five is about explicitly teaching students how to build stamina and, and practicing that with your class. And they have phenomenal resources about like how to teach kids, like what does it look like when you are working successfully independently? What does it look like when the teacher is working successfully with a small group and not getting interrupted 300 times? You know, okay, let's start out today and let's see if we can do it for three minutes with everybody focused the whole time. And then let's celebrate that. And then tomorrow we're going for three and a half, you know, depending on the grade level, of course. Uh, but kindergarten three minutes could be a long time for some guys in the beginning of September. So, you know, start small and then celebrate those successes. And eventually you're going to get to the amount of time that you really want to have for those small groups so that you can cycle through. And um, I've just seen some amazing things happen in classrooms where teachers kind of take that book by the horns, um, bull by the horns, and and make sure that that we're teaching kids we think they know right we think they know what independent work looks like but just like all of those behavioral expectations that we look at for pbis or positive reinforcement um or for anything you know how do you read a nonfiction text right like they, they need explicit instruction in how to work independently too um so that investment in your first six weeks of school is well worth the time and there's lots of resources on the internet around building stamina um for student independent work um that are are great and daily five has the best i've ever seen um they really do they do a nice job of laying that out for people and they have like sample lesson plans of how you how this could look in your classroom um, when you roll it out to students so lots of great pieces yeah thanks aaron um 
All right, if there's no other questions, I will stay on if anyone has any questions they'd rather not ask in front of the group, that's fine. Um, but again, reach out. Um, we're here to help throughout the year um, and we'll work together to, to get moving forward with things. So thank you very much. Um, have a wonderful start to your school year and I look forward to seeing you all out in the buildings. Thanks so much, Lindsay. Just to plug for certificates, you can go right on to the coach's website where you go for your in-service schedule. You can print your certificate of participation for any of the sessions that you were part of today. Super easy. You've got a couple minutes now. You might want to just take care of that while it's fresh in your mind um, and save them someplace safe so that you have them for certification licensure. Um, and then also the, we'll be sending out a follow-up survey for everybody about today. Um, and please take the time to fill it out. It gives us great information to help us plan the next in-service and also anything that we need to clarify or put out or provide resources for in, in between. So we're here to help everybody be successful this year. Take the time to get credit for your professional learning. And please, in the next couple of days, take some time. I know busy, busy first days, but take a couple minutes, please, and tell us uh, what was great about today and what you need next to continue to be supported. Thanks so much. Thank you.